Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. I can't believe it's already time for my June garden tour. This month has gone very fast for me. And as you know, I like to pan my backyard just to show what's going on for that month. I like to have a constant or a consistent look at the garden. And then I like to go into a specific area. So this month I'm going to split the garden tour into two parts again, just because I've, I don't want an hour long video. And this month I'm going to start in the, sh in the sunny areas of my garden. And tomorrow I will do the part sun to shady areas of the garden. So this faces south and west. So it gets full on sun from my new central bed here all the way around the corner. My name is Crystal and I garden in zone nine south of Houston, close-ish to the Texas Gulf Coast. We have hot and very humid climate, have a hot and humid climate, and we also can get quite a bit of rain. So we have heavy clay soils and that can mean retaining a lot of water. A lot of the plants that grow very well down here in the summer are tropical and subtropical plants. But let me get closer and let's start the garden tour. I'm gonna start off with my new bed that we put in in April. We're calling this our central bed. And this is brand new for us. It's a raised bed and I'm very happy with how it's looking. So I put in 10 Tithonia plants and these are a huge hit. Tithonia is also called Mexican sunflower and it's a huge hit with butterflies and the pollinators. It is as tall as my fence now, which is six and a half feet tall. Maybe it's starting to get a little taller. And Tithonia, it flattened in a storm that we had come through. And so I staked it up with bamboo sticks and it's doing okay. Some of you have had some really great suggestions and I thank you for it on what I could do next year or even if I succession plant, maybe, you know, put it in a tomato cage or, or stake them up right away. And I'm really considering that because, you know, once they flatten, um, that's it. Well, not that's it, but they don't look good or I should say spectacular after that. But I really do like all the number of blooms that I'm getting and so do the butterflies. So in this bed, I have Coneflower, Cheyenne Spirit. I really like this series. You don't know necessarily what you're gonna get because there's different colors of flowers, but I do like it. Quite a bit actually, it's taller. A taller variety than my powwow wild berry that I have in my north garden. Behind that I have my Stokes Aster. This is a Texas native. Still have a few, bloom, few blooms left. You can see how much it bloomed and I need to come out here and deadhead this. Haven't done it yet but Stokes Aster is a nice butterfly attractor and a native. I have Liatris that finished blooming, and then Yarrow is new for me this year. And I do like it. I really like the foliage. I like this foliage. I like how it looks. I like how bushy it is. I wish it would flower more. So I don't know if I'm a huge fan of Yarrow yet or not. And then here I have Rose Marvel, 
Salvia nemorosa, which has been a beautiful bloomer for me. And it's just been blooming, 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 and I recently deadheaded it, so that's why it looks a little sparse on the blooms. And then my little Joe Pieweed that I transplanted recently. And then my bigger plants towards the back. I have a Love and Wishes Salvia. I have a red Porter Weed, and this You've heard me extol the wonderful benefits of porterweed in a pollinator garden. This is visited all throughout the day. It's a dwarf porterweed, but all my porterweeds are visited all throughout the day because these flowers refill with nectar. And so it is a huge pollinator hit. And porterweed is a member of the verbena family. This dwarf porterweed is supposed to get one to two feet tall. It is clearly way taller than that. It's at least three and a half feet tall. But down here south of Houston, a lot of times our plants, the plants will get much larger. We have a very long growing season. And if they do well in our climate, they usually typically do get larger than what the tags say. And then here I have a hot lip salvia. All right, I'm gonna get a little closer to the back because this is my trellis. So I trellis on this five piece trellis combo, I have what's called Cardinal Climber. And Cardinal Climber is a vine that I've told you about that I grow from seed and it is a favorite of hummingbirds. My butterflies will go to Cardinal Climber also. It is a nice vine. It's an annual that grows very easily from seed. Let's see if I can get a picture. The leaves are airy, and right now it is just starting to fill in on the trellis. I've got a few blooms. But when this really starts to bloom is in late August, and that is when our hummingbird migration starts. And the hummingbirds come and they just fight over <laughs> this plant. I can have four, five, six hundred blooms a day on this trellis system. And then I have in a container a vermilionaire kufia that I cut all the way back and it's starting to come back. And I cut that back this spring, so it's it's taken a little bit. And then I have in the same pot this really pretty, uh, albeit if you like this kind of an airy plant, Roselia. And Roselia is a favorite of my hummingbird that is here year round. She loves this plant. I've mentioned that before. It's got just a perfect tubular flower. She comes to this typically first. And it's an unusual plant in that it, these are the leaves. I mean, it is, it is certainly, certainly unusual. Okay, so I'm going to turn and right next to my central bed and trellis, I have another five piece trellis. And this I have passion vine on. And passion vine is the host plant to the Gulf fritillary caterpillar. And I see a couple out right now. They're just starting to fly. Let me get a little closer. This passion vine is called incense. And it is a hybrid. It's one of the hardiest, or I should say cold hardiest passion vines, but it also will spread by underground runners. So I have kept it under control because I absolutely want this in my yard and I want it to come back every year. And so 
I put up with the runners. Let me show you right next to, coming to the south, I have what I call the tree bed. And this is full of salvia and kufia and lantana. And I had a volunteer that I thought, well, let me try to have it grow up my long, tall pole. And it did, but then it decided it wanted to start covering the salvia and I do not like that. So I will not be doing that again. In any case, I love this passion vine because I have noticed the more of a host plant that you have, of course, the more butterflies and caterpillars that you will have. And so I have it planted in the ground. I'm on the back side here of the trellis. So I have it planted all in the ground, all along the trellis system. And it just gets beautiful and lush. And it is full of caterpillars and eggs and butterflies, just full of life. And I can't tell because it, I have so much of this host plant. I can't really tell that it's get, it is getting munched on. And I like that because I like to have the plants look lush and gorgeous and really pretty. So if you come close, I can tell, okay, there's been some munching going on, but you really can't tell as a whole when there's so many plants. And then I have passion vine planted in a very tall planter. So I did this too when I first planted them because I didn't know what was going to be successful and both are highly successful. And then on the edge, I have one of the three budlia or butterfly bushes that I have left. And this is Buzz Hot. It's a raspberry. I really, really like this butterfly bush. I have it in the container because we are so wet here. Butterfly bushes do not like our climate. They don't like wet feet. And typically in the Houston area, they're gonna have wet feet. So I've had 10 different butterfly bushes in my venture. And the only ones that I still have surviving are the ones that are in containers. And this happens to be one. I've had this now for, I think this is going on its fourth year. And then in the midsection to this trellis bed, I have a native that's called flame acanthus. This is a bush or shrub and it grows gorgeously here. Because it's a native, it's pretty well adapted to our climate. It's not necessarily adapted to the Houston climate, but it does, I mean, it's not made for the Houston climate, but it has adapted fairly well. And it has gorgeous flowers that open up both butterflies and hummingbirds love this little dainty flower and it just gets hundreds on it. The one thing that it does do, so this is its third year in the ground, third or fourth, I think third. And it's growing really tall for me because I pruned it just a little, I didn't prune it a lot. So I think it has taken on the, the saying of first year creep, first year sleep, second year creep, third year leap. It has really leapt and it is tall. So this is something that I need to really think about because it will flop over and it flopped over in one of our thunderstorms. So you can see here that I have it staked. So it will have more of an upright habit to it because I don't want it flopping over and laying over in my salvia lucantha. Which brings me to the next 
bed. And this is what I call my tree bed. This is all of this that I've showed you is in full sun. They love their life. And I love the pollinators that are on this all the all throughout the day, all day long. So I have a David Verity Kufia that blooms just monster blooms. And native bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds love this plant. This is one of the taller Kufias. And I have it in a terracotta glazed container. And I like to bring it up because I like it to be a feature along with the salvia in this garden. Then coming around, I have lantana. And my lantana is getting kind of, oh, a little bit crowded out from the salvia amistad. Salvia amistad is close to six feet tall. It is a monster in my garden and it is just a performer that performs beautifully until frost. So it's one of my first to awaken in the spring and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and I can't say enough about this hybrid. It's a Garanitica type salvia and it just, it's fantastic. But it grows. Let me get down here and look inside. Look at what, how, how this spread is. I can't even begin to describe how wide this is it's just it loves its life here and it rewards me with just a beautiful beautiful growing habit so down along the edge i have a greg's mist flower which is native to texas and greg's mist flower attracts butterflies but in particular monarchs and queen butterflies and i've had more queen butterflies in my garden because of this flower, even laying eggs. So the last few days I've seen queens, I've had queen caterpillars in my garden this spring, and it's just fun to see them because I typically don't see a lot of queens. And then on this end, I have more lantana. It is a butterfly and hummingbird favorite. It, it It's trying to keep off the salvia and this is my favorite series because it's a mounding lantana this series is called bloomify and it's a sterile series so it doesn't set seed even though this looks like what should be a little seed ball it doesn't this is where the blooms come from and it just blooms and blooms and blooms all season long and will bloom up until frost so let me go around the corner. And this is where I have my pretty Salvia Amante, which is like its cousin, Amistad. Has a vibrant pink. But this is where I made the mistake on my passion vine. And the passion vine now is loving its life and saying, I am going to grow over the Salvia. And so I've been pulling it and it's a little hard to get to. And so, like I said, I'm not going to do that again. And then I've got a nice stand of Salvia Lucantha. This blooms for me a little bit in the spring. It's also called Mexican Bush Sage. And then it will put on a beautiful late summer to fall show. And then further to the south, I have a couple of containers of porterweed. This is a red porterweed. You know how much I love this plant, a member of the verbena family. Oh, it does so well down here. And if you are gonna add one plant that you want hummingbirds and butterflies to visit, I would add this plant. It is a very much a tender perennial. So for us, 
that means that it might come back in a zone nine. I have them in containers, most of them because I protect them. And then I had my blue salvia reseed itself in areas of the yard and I let it go because I wanted to see which one was the prolific seeder and it was my blue salvia. And I'm letting it do its thing because I kind of like how it looks like in this small raised bed. I've got my paniculata flocks, the John Fannick flocks here. And I also have my blue chiffon Rose of Sharon. Let me get on the other side to see this. I got this as a tiny little plant from Proven Winners. I ordered it through the mail. I did not like how tiny it was. This is its fourth summer. It finally looks like a shrub, but I wanted this blue flower that is a pollinator attractor and it has buds and blooms. It's an indeterminate type of flower. So that means it has buds all along the, the stalks instead of just on the tips. So if you get hibiscus or rose mallow and you have to really look and ask to see if they're determinate or indeterminate types because I don't like the ones that will just flower at the tips and I did have one at, at one time. So this garden bed I created to feature this plant, it's supposed to get up to 12 feet tall, and it's finally, finally looking like a shrub. So I'm happy. And then over here, I've got my purple porterweed. And I've got a Gulf Fritillary caterpillar coming <laughs> to say good morning. So I wanted to include her in the video. And I have purple porterweed all throughout my gardens because of the wonderful pollinator attractors that they are. This is a new plant for me. I planted it in a container. It is called a candlestick tree. It's the host plant to our yellow butterflies down here. We have three different sulfur butterflies that use this plant as a host plant and then it will fall in the fall it will it's supposed to produce very large yellow blooms that look like candles so I'm excited to see that I put it in a container because my understanding is it can it can be fairly aggressive so I wanted to see what it's going to do first and I also had um, a commenter tell me that in Texas it easily grows from seed so next off up I want to talk about my favorite one of my favorites in the yard and that is the coral honeysuckle which I have planted both in the ground and then in containers so let me get a tad closer I know the Sun is out so it's a little bit intense here apologize for that but this blooms these long tubular flowers so nectar types love this it is a native it's a native in a, a lot of part of the country after it's pollinated it creates berries and or fruit and these are eaten by birds and so the nectar produce that's produced feeds a lot and so do the berries and this was covered in red berries and I hardly see anything now so the birds have definitely come and eaten the berries off the other thing that I've recently found out this year is it is the host plant to a couple of different moths but in particular it's it's a host to the hummingbird moth and I have to laugh at myself because I always wondered why I had so many hummingbird moths in my yard. I love it because they come out at dusk and at dawn. And this is why is because I have a gorgeous, a gorgeous stand of this coral honeysuckle. And then as a new experiment to me this year, we are 
experimenting with having a bottomless container. And the reason I have containers over here is because I have an issue with drainage and plants over here could be in water for weeks and have wet feet. And so this is, this can tolerate, this plant can tolerate water, but not necessarily for weeks. And so I did want the root ball above ground to protect it, but then it also has access to go to the ground if needed. So I'm gonna keep you up to date on what that does for us. And then when I come this way, I'm gonna to go to the back and then come towards the front. So I'm gonna go back here. Firebush for us will die in a freeze and we froze, we've actually frozen the last three years, but it comes and grows vigorously from the roots. So this died to the ground and I cut it back and it is growing beautifully it's probably four feet tall right now and it is blooming wonderfully this is my small leaf firebush and it has small blooms and then small berries that the birds love this i think is native to florida but it is certainly does well here along the Gulf Coast of Texas. And then I have a larger leaf. Let me go over there. This larger leaf fire bush has larger flowers and then of course larger berries. And it doesn't flower as much as my small leaf. This thing just flowers profusely, but both are loved by all different kinds of pollinators. It's a favorite of my hummingbirds and it is a favorite of the bees, the native bees, and of course butterflies. Butterflies are on this all the time, even if all they're doing is just sunning themselves. So the sun is coming out now and it's a little bit harder to see because the colors get washed out. But as I've mentioned, I do have quite a few containers, although I do plant in the ground, but I have butterfly bush, native salvia farinacea, a vermilionaire kufia. I have this plant, I just have one of. It will get to grow to be bushy and it's come back gorgeously and it's even flowered. It's flowered earlier this year than it ever has. And this is called my pride of Barbados. It's flowered, it's produced the, the seed pod. And I really, I really find this interesting. I've got another Budlia back here. And then of course my Salvia Farinacea. This is the native Texas Salvia, one of the natives. And it just, I've got this in the ground all over throughout this bed. And I like how it comes up and what it does. I have a flame acanthus back in here and also a Greg's mist flower. And so we're gonna kind of see how it competes, how everything competes and what, what is super successful because all of those are natives. Hopefully they can grow up together well. So, I've just placed my giant milkweed within the past week. I had it out front because I had it protected. And my white blooming giant milkweed is blooming. The purple already finished blooming. It will bloom again in the late summer. But I love this high element. I was missing that in this in this south garden and so i really i like how this is starting to look this is not its super great time when this looks fantastic is late in the summer on the corner i have a yellow cestrum and on the yellow cestrum i have a gulf fritillary sunning itself
butterflies are cold-blooded so they do need they do need the sun to get their body temperatures up so they can fly. Yellow cestrum, I don't really talk a lot about. It can get to be a very large shrub and I cut it back every year. I do, golly, it's probably over five feet tall. Um, I do cut it back and I do like it on this corner just because it adds a little, a little diff bit different interest amongst my coral honeysuckle and it has um, the the flowers on it are a pollinator hit all right I'm gonna back up a little bit and this is the side of my house this is east facing so this gets morning Sun until about one o'clock two o'clock in the afternoon and so I have plants and containers so I can move them around but this is my native Turk's cap. I have a porter weed and then a yellow Esperanza and these are all planted in containers. As I look this way, I have tropical hibiscus that I've grown for years now and they were blooming beautifully a few days ago and now I don't know if I'm gonna have any blooms today, but I have a pink, yellow with a red center, and then red. And hibiscus are plants that are pollinator favorites also. Pollinators will visit these plants all throughout the day. And I like them because they're pretty dramatic and have make a pretty good impact with their large flowers. All right, I'm gonna come around this way. This is looking onto my patio and I will move my Vermillionaire. No, this is a David Verity Kufia. And you can see it's struggling because it is not in full sun and it's flowers a little bit and it's getting long and leggy and that's just because it doesn't get enough sun. It needs full sun and I have an azalea I've had for years and then I've got my containers that I like I'm gonna do a video upcoming of some of these containers and so I'm not gonna go through that but I do want to point out this plant and this plant has gotten pummeled with rain it is the supertunia vista bubblegum it is was the size of a monster and it does grow to be that i do have it in a container and i was very pleased with it typically they poop out for us in the summer this one's starting to but i'm not going to you know it's been done it's done so well that i'm just going to let it do its thing i'm going to kind of cut it back continue to fertilize it and we'll see we'll see how it performs and finally, I'm on the back side of my central bed with the Cardinal Climber Trellis. And I have a trellised Mexican flame vine. I really like this vine. It profusely flowers in the spring. And then it went through a dormant period during the heat of our summer and flowered again in the fall. I'm curious if that's going to be the case for it here. I've shared with you my cannas that I've had and I was so excited to get these cannas. I planted them. This is the first year I've had cannas in the yard and they have gotten, this container anyway, has gotten overrun by leaf roller caterpillars. And it has just, they've just decimated this plant. The leaf rollers turn into a Brazilian skipper butterfly, which is a drab colored butterfly. Not interesting at all. <laughs> but my cannas over here are doing better. So they haven't gotten taken over by the leaf rollers, which is interesting to me. And I do like the foliage on them, although not a huge fan of the, this type, 
the flowers I thought were going to be way more bushy and showy and they've been somewhat disappointing to me and I do need to come and prune these back. So I'm back between my two beds, my two trellises and my central and tree bed here. And I want to thank you for coming along on my sunny garden tour. These are the plants that are in pretty much full sun throughout the day. And the butterflies are just starting to come out because I like to tape pretty early so I can get the best lighting for the video. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again soon.